With the excitement of the Fallout TV series releasing on Prime Video, I thought it'd be really cool to explore some of the most terrifying vaults from the Fallout series. If you don't know, Fallout is a video game series that's been around since the 90s. It's a role-playing game set in a retro-futuristic post-nuclear apocalypse. It is my favorite game of all time, and the show is not that bad either. I highly recommend checking it out. One of the best aspects to the series, in my opinion, is its environmental storytelling. Coming upon a scene years after the events took place and uncovering what happened. This is done especially well throughout the game's many vaults. The vaults are an aspect of the Fallout universe that were created to shelter humanity from the devastation of the nuclear apocalypse. However, for people who are familiar with the games, they know that in reality, the company that commissioned the creation of these vaults, Vault Tech, had ulterior motives. They designed the vaults to conduct physical, mental, and social experiments on the unsuspecting vault dwellers in order to collect data to help preserve their existence of the American elites. Because of these experiments, many of the vaults failed, leading to some of the most fascinating stories the series has ever created. So, without further ado, here are, in my opinion, the most terrifying vaults of the Fallout universe. Vault 87 from Fallout 3 Vault 87 is located in the Capital Wasteland, the ruins of old Washington, D.C. In Fallout 3, the Lone Wanderer travels to this vault in order to uncover the Garden of Eden creation kit. While exploring the vault, the Lone Wanderer is attacked by several super mutants. Not knowing the origin of super mutants, the Lone Wanderer assumes these creatures invaded the vault killing all of its inhabitants. However, after reading the terminal entries from the vault, the Lone Wanderer quickly discovers that many inhabitants of the vault were dying long before that. 87 residents, to be exact, died of unknown causes. One of the mechanics is also troubled by this, and after the death of his wife, went on to investigate what was going on in the experimental chamber of the vault. As the Lone Wanderer makes their way to this section of the vault, they quickly discover human test subjects, who were killed due to an injection of an aerosol chemical referred to by the terminals as the forced evolutionary virus. The super mutants hadn't invaded the vault, they were created from the vault. The source of super mutants in the capital wasteland came from experimenting FEV on the unsuspecting vault dwellers of this vault. It appeared that Vault 87 was only ever meant to be a testing ground for FEV, killing some of them and turning others into the first generation of super mutants. It appears after the mechanic discovered this, in his anger, he released the super mutants, which led to them killing every one in the vault, and turning the rest into one of them. Now, the vault sits as a home to the super mutants, who regularly bring back people from the capital wasteland to inject FEV into them and create more super mutants. Vault 111 from Fallout 4 Yes, the vault that the sole survivor begins their journey in from Fallout 4 also has a terrible experiment associated with it. Found in the Boston ruins of the Commonwealth, Vault 111 was a very unique vault as it was much smaller in design compared to any of the other vaults. That's because, as the sole survivor would quickly find out, the vault was never meant to house its population from the apocalypse, but instead freeze them in a state of cryogenic sleep in order to study the effects of prolonged isolation. While this fact is scary enough, the fact that vault tech security and scientists were told to lie to the vault dwellers as they entered the vault before getting frozen. Another scary fact to this vault is what vault tech would then do to its own staff. After the inhabitants were frozen, the security and staff were told to monitor their pods for a 100-day mandatory shelter period in which after they would join up with vault tech in one of their bunkers and the rest of the experiment would be monitored remotely. After the sole survivor is woken up 200 years later, they can read through the terminals of the vault to discover what really happened. 
It appeared that vault -Tec was meant to deliver an all-clear to its staff, to let them know when the surface would be safe enough to traverse, in order to join up with vault -Tec HQ. However, the all-clear signal would never be sent. Either because vault -Tec also ended up being destroyed in the apocalypse, or, more than likely, vault -Tec never intended for its staff to survive. The sole survivor can read how security demanded that the Overseer allow them to leave due to their food and resources dwindling. The Overseer refused, demanding that they wait until they receive the all-clear signal. After months of waiting and running out of their limited supplies, the security would revolt against the scientists, leading to a fight where most of them were killed. It's unclear if any of the vault -Tec staff survived, but the inhabitants would survive for another 200 years in cryogenic sleep. They would only be killed years later, when the Institute invaded the vaults and shut down their life support systems, keeping only the sole survivor alive. Vault 34, from Fallout New Vegas. Vault 34 is located in the Mojave Wasteland of Nevada. The purpose of this vault was to test the human condition. The courier can come upon this vault, and upon doing so will discover that the vault is completely flooded with radiation as well as all of the vault dwellers being turned into feral ghouls. Reading the terminals, the courier discovers that the purpose of this vault was to test how the dwellers would respond to overpopulation and population control. Half of the vault's storage was dedicated to a massive armory of weapons. Not only that, but the vault also intentionally had doubled the normal occupancy the vault would thrive for a good while until the events of Fallout New Vegas, 200 years after it began operations. Finally, the population had gotten too big to sustain, and the Overseer, out of fear of potential population control, ordered the permanent sealing of the armory. This made a lot of vault dwellers angry, and a group of them would actually leave the vault, going on to form a somewhat successful post-war faction known as the Boomers at the Nellis Air Force Base. These original Vault 34 residents were the lucky ones, as the remaining dwellers would only continue to argue and fight about how to handle the overpopulation problem. With the armory being permanently locked, the dwellers began rioting, eventually leading to one of their radiation control devices being broken. This led to radiation completely flooding the vault and turning anyone left alive into feral ghouls. By the time the courier arrives, it's too late and all of the dwellers have already turned in to feral ghouls. Vault 12, from Fallout 1. Located in Bakersfield, California, Vault 12 was advertised to be one of the best vaults with all the amenities required to survive a nuclear apocalypse. Of course, that was all just a cover for vault Tech's dark intentions. When the vault dweller arrives at the vault 80 years later, it has turned into the post-war town of Necropolis, home to many of the region's ghouls. Necropolis serves as a safe haven for ghouls who face discrimination in the wasteland, and that's due to the founders being ghouls themselves. You see, as one of vault Tech's most nefarious experiments, Vault 12's door was designed so that it would not close properly when the bombs fell, in order to allow radiation to seep in. The purpose of the experiment was to study the effects of prolonged exposure to radiation. Well, similar to Vault 34, the vault would flood with radiation as a result, and the vault dwellers would all mutate into the first generation of ghouls. By the time the vault dweller arrives, the original ghouls have founded the town of Necropolis around the vault, with Set, one of the original vault dwellers, as the leader of their town. There'd better be a killer reason for standing in my shadow. Does next on the menu ring a bell for ya, normie? Oh, I'm gonna eat you up and be singing that happy tummy song. I got that happy tummy. Vault 77 Not appearing in any actual game, Vault 77's story is told in a licensed comic that was released to promote the release of Fallout 3, One Man in a Crate of Puppets. As the title suggests, Vault 77's experiment was to test the effects of prolonged isolation of someone, hence why there was only one occupant. 
One man was given an entire vault all to himself with no one else. Obviously, being isolated led to the vault dweller going insane. A little while later, a package would appear with many different puppets. The single vault dweller was ecstatic and quickly made characters out of the puppets to cope with his isolation. But when he discovered a puppet dressed as a vault boy, he quickly created a persona that embodied all the worst aspects of the vault dweller into it. The dweller would eventually leave Vault 77 with the Vault Boy puppet, in which he would hear the Vault Boy's voice in his head telling him to murder everybody. The Vault Dweller would go on a killing spree throughout the wasteland, eventually becoming a legend known as the Puppet Man. While Vault 77 has never been found in the games, and many in the wasteland debate whether the Puppet Man is real or just an urban legend, a single Vault 77 jumpsuit can be found at the slaver camp of Paradise Falls. The jumpsuit alone terrifies the slavers. Even though some don't believe the legend to be real, it still scares them enough to want to get rid of it. Like I told you, man, I don't fucking know where it came from, but it freaks the boys out. Some story from a while back about a stranger with no name. Just get rid of the damn thing. Ain't no good gonna come from keeping it around. Besides, if it is his, maybe he'll come back for it. Comprende? Vault 112 from Fallout 3. Found in the capital wasteland of the DC ruins, Vault 112 can be found by the Lone Wanderer, still fully operational 200 years after it originally opened. The purpose of the vault was to test the effects of suspended animation in a simulated reality. The overseer of the vault was a vault tech scientist named Stanislas Braun, whom was famous for developing the simulated reality technology. He was asked by vault tech to create a vault that would keep the vault dwellers inside of a simulated reality to which he happily obliged. When the lone wanderer finds the vault, he discovers only a couple vault dwellers in suspended animation in one room, while robo-brain robots tend to the maintenance of the vault. Welcome to Vault 112, resident. According to sensors, you have arrived 202.3 years behind schedule. Please redress in your Vault Tech issued Vault suit before proceeding. If you have misplaced your suit, I am authorized to distribute a new one. Once dressed, please proceed down the stairs to the main floor so that you may enter your assigned Tranquility Lounger. Entering into a simulation pod, the Lone Wanderer discovers that every vault dweller is living out a simulation of a small community in pre-war America. None of the vault dwellers are aware of the outside world, being unaware of the bombs falling or of the wasteland at all, believing that they are still living in pre-war America prior to the Great War. The only one aware of the simulation is Braun himself, who has taken the form of a little girl named Betty. Braun uses the simulation as an opportunity to torture the inhabitants of the vault, killing them in unique and horrific ways, only to reset them back into the simulation where the dwellers have no memory of what happened prior. He has been torturing the vault dwellers for 200 years, with them being completely unaware of what is happening to them. Even after the Lone Wanderer reveals that they can leave at any time, Braun reveals he has no intentions to do so, as he is happy being a god in this simulation and torturing his vault dwellers forever. This leads to a difficult decision from the Lone Wanderer, either activate the vault's failsafe and permanently kill everyone, or allow Braun to continue to torture the vault dwellers forever while they remain unaware of what is happening to them. Vault 11 from Fallout New Vegas Found in the Mojave Desert of Nevada, the Courier can find Vault 11, 200 years after it had already collapsed. This vault's experiment served as kind of a Milgram experiment for vault Tech, as the experiment tested whether or not the inhabitants would follow the orders of an authority figure, even if their orders were immoral and evil. They did this by having the vault mainframe announce that the vault dwellers would have to sacrifice one of their own every year in order to keep the vault's life support systems online. 
the angry Vault Dwellers universally agreed to sacrifice their first Overseer, who was privy to the experiment all along. This led to a vacancy spot in the Overseer position, and the Vault would restructure to accommodate for it. After a few years, the Overseer would continue to be the one sacrificed to the Vault in order to keep it running. This led to the Overseer position and the one that sacrificed becoming one of the same, and every year, an election would be held by the Dwellers to vote on a new Overseer who would serve as Overseer for a year and then be sacrificed to the Vault. As a result, the worst of the worst would be voted to be the Overseer, so that the Vault community could feel less guilty about their decisions. After a while, corruption began to take over the system, and the Vault community would be broken up into different voting blocks. One voting block, the Justice Block, became so powerful that it seemed whoever they endorsed as Overseer would win pretty much every time, allowing a small group of people to decide who would get sacrificed each year. After one Vault Dweller, Nathan Stone, went on a streak of poker wins against the leaders of the Justice Block, they had decided to endorse him leading to Nathan Stone being the most likely to become the next Overseer. After Nathan's wife, Catherine, pleaded for his life to the Justice Block, the leaders extorted her for sex in exchange for her husband's life. But after a month of going through this, the Justice Block endorsed Nathan Stone anyway. This led to Catherine going on a murdering spree in the vault, killing many members of the Justice Block. She did this knowing that she would be caught and that the Vault would want to vote for her as the next Overseer in order to have her sacrificed instead of her husband. And her plan worked. Catherine Stone would be elected as Overseer. Her very first decree as Overseer was to change the selection process, which, as Overseer, she had the authority to do. With her decree, the position of Overseer would no longer be decided by vote, but instead by a random selection from the vault Tech computer. This caused the Justice Block to lose all of its power, and in response, they revolted, leading to a mass civil war in the vault that killed all but five of their residents. After the fighting was done, the final five survivors decided that it simply wasn't worth it anymore, and when the time came to deliver another sacrifice, they refused. And... In a horrific twist, the vault mainframe congratulated the Dwellers, revealing that the whole thing was just a test. Not only would life support systems not shut down, but the vault door would also open, allowing the Dwellers to leave. Congratulations, citizens of Vault 11. You have made the decision not to sacrifice one of your own. You can walk with your head held high, knowing that your commitment to human life is a shining example to us all. And to make that feeling of pride even sweeter, I have some exciting news. Despite what you were led to believe, the population of Vault 11 is not going to be exterminated for its disobedience. Instead, the mechanism to open the main vault door has now been enabled, and you can come and go at your leisure. But not so fast. Be sure to check with your overseer to find out if it's safe to leave. Here at vault Tech. Your safety is our number one priority. They had been killing each other for nothing. Had they refused at the very beginning, nobody would have had to have died. Four of the five survivors couldn't live with this revelation, leading to only one survivor of Vault 11, who journeyed into the wasteland to share his story. The vault only operated for 16 years, and the courier discovers this vault 200 years after these events. <laughs>